I look at this church and I see what God is doing here, it's not something that's happening everywhere or in every church. There's a lot of Victory Outreach churches, but 80% of them are under 100. So we're operating in the 20%. Give the Lord a hand clap for that. What you're seeing here is not happening everywhere. A lot of times we always try to look for all the good that is happening. Well, good is happening right here. Amen. We're not in a perfect place, amen, but we're in a good place. This is a good place to be and part of a good church to be a part of. So don't look for another church. Don't, don't go to another church. Just build this church, amen. Put your hands to the plow. The Bible says don't look back. Put your hands to the plow, and I thank the Lord for that. There's a couple things I wanted to say here, you know, and I wanted to ask, answer a couple questions real quick. Is Why is this happening? Why is the church growing like this? Amen. Is this the way that God planned the church to be? In a way it is, but it's just not happening in every place. It's happening because it's the right city, the right time, and the right man. Pastor Ezra is the right person for the. He has people skills. He's anointed by God. He sat under Pastor Sonny. He's, he's a man of God, and that's why it's happening. You take him out and put somebody else in, it'll shrink down to their mentality. Amen. The reason why he has a big mentality because that's what he was taught. So you need to stay here and flow. Hello, somebody. When there's good ground, Good things happen, and there's good ground here. Hello, somebody. Whether it's to, to grow some tomatoes or whatever it may be, God is going to grow men and women of God right here in this building. This is just a temporary place. There's another spot. This thing is too small. This is it's too small. It's a oh, let's kick back right here. No, we ain't kicking back right here. Hello, somebody. We're going somewhere. We're going somewhere. You're going to be part of that. Amen. So think big. And you say, oh, are you talking to me? Yeah, I'm talking to you. You might have some issues right now, but God is working them out. Hello, somebody. You might have a little mentality, but God is working it out. You might not see the end of the road, but God is working it out. Some of you are going to get married. Some of you are going to bring your family here. Some of you are going to raise up men and women of God, teach in the V group, in the V life. You're going to be a part of this thing. You see, you ask yourself a question, why do they want this church to grow? It's very simple. With more, you can do more. There are 8 billion people on the planet, a whole lot of folks, Amen. You see them when you go to the mall or you go somewhere and say, who are all these people? Amen. Well, they need to know about Jesus because the Bible said that God so loved the whole world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes on him will not perish. Everybody needs to know. It's not for a little bit. It's for everybody. God loves everyone. Hello, somebody. God, what do I got to do? I got to walk a thousand ladies across the street. No, you ain't got to do nothing. You're saved by the grace of God. Give the Lord a praise clap. I want to teach you another word. It's a Greek word. It's called strategy, but it's pronounced strategios in the Greek. And it means to lead an army. God has given us a strategy here, and that is to become a mega team church. Another word I want to teach you is Yarash, which is a Hebrew word. How many know the Bible was written in the Old Testament in Hebrew and the New Testament in Greek? Yarash is a Hebrew word, which means to occupy by driving out the previous tenants. It means to disinherit or to dispossess. God is calling me and you to Yarash. God is calling us to slap the devil upside the head and say, you're in the way. way. You're in my territory. I'm here to occupy. Get up out of here. We're here to disinherit the devil. We're here to tell the devil, get out of my house. Get your hands off my children. Amen. They are the promise of God. God loves them.
The next word I want to teach you is gentrification. And some of you know it, amen? Some of you been around for a minute and you're, uh, you hang out with Theo, Theo Lajo. You know, you hang out with him. Well, gentrification means to improve and attract. Let me explain that to you. It's like, you know, you go and you see a rundown neighborhood and then you, t- you, you buy the buildings and you start putting Walmarts and, and Starbucks and, you know, in and out and Bob's Burgers, you know, wherever you want to put in there, hello. That's called gentrification. Because riches attract, amen? You see one guy go in there and say, man, he bought up that house. I don't know if you've been to uh, certain cities, uh, certain parts of L.A. It was run down 20 years ago. There was nobody living down there. Just all hotel buildings, selling drugs, all kinds of sin. Now you go down there, man, they got, they got all those grocery stores and restaurants all over the place. People who came in from the left and the right and bought up property, and they're beautifying it. That's what gentrification means. Let me explain. Riches attract. Say riches. Well, the richest place in the world, according to Miles Monroe, he's a great author, pastor that passed away a few years ago. He used to write a lot of books on, on purpose and go around teaching all over the world. He died in a plane crash, and he's with the Lord right now. And he said this. He said, the richest place in the world is not in the oil fields of the Middle East or the diamond mines of the continent of Africa. It's not in the multi-million services of Singapore or in Norway where they have the highest standard of living on earth. And it's not in the United States which boasts the biggest economy on the planet. But the richest place in the world is in the graveyard. Because in the graveyard are songs that were never sung, books that were never written, Cures for diseases that were never found. Sermons that were never preached. Inventions that were never discovered. And beautiful people that never blossomed. That's why the mega team mentality is important. And it's so important for us to get it together to reach the world and get the church to reach its full potential. Now is the time. It's not about, oh, I got to buy my this, I got to do that, I got to go there. Now God wants to do it now. Amen. There is approximately 150,000 people that die every day in this world. They need to know about Jesus. They need to have the same opportunity that me and you have. If they reject it, that's on them, but we need to tell them. Hello, somebody. I want you to turn to John chapter 15, verse 12. And I'll get there real quick. John 15, verse 12. I'll begin reading. I kind of coincided this message with what Pastor said last Sunday when he talked on fruit and what Kenny said on Wednesday when he talked on love. John 15. Let me get there just one second. Okay. Verse number 12. The Word of God reads, I'm reading out of the King James a new King James Version, it says, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. God wants us to love each other because he loves us. That's, that's, that's not hard, is it? Say, yeah, it is hard. How come a lot of us don't love each other? Man, some of you, some of you are, are like that, that comic said, some of you are this close for me going upside your head. No, man, we got to love everybody, regardless if they get on our nerves or not. Hello. I got to love Knucklehead Ted and Jed and and Buckethead myself. Hello, somebody. So we got to love each other. Say love each other. Greater love, verse 13, has no man than this, that he laid down one's life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. So how many want to be a friend of God? The Winans used to sing about it. I am a friend of God. Remember that song? Amen. We, how many want God to be their friend? Amen. If there's anybody in this world I want to be on my side in a fight, it would be God. Hello, somebody. I want to be a friend of God. Well, it says, you're my friend if you do whatever I command you. And then it says, 
You are my friends if you do whatever I command. And he says, no longer I call you servants, for a servant doesn't know what his master is doing. But I shared everything with you. I told you everything he's saying. But I have called you friends for all things that I heard from my father I have made known to you. In other words, I told you everything. You ever try to hide something from your wife? Hello, somebody. Right? You try to hide something. You're, and she always said, we're married. You got to share everything with me. I, I have a sock drawer. It's been pilvaged. I don't know what happened to all my socks that I had in my drawer. All there is is remnants. <laughs> you know what I mean? You did not choose me, but I chose you, says God, and appointed you. You didn't choose to come here. God said, I chose you and put you here. Appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, like Pastor was saying last week. And then it goes further. It says, then your fruit should remain, meaning to build a team or to have a team of people, more than one. Hello, somebody. So... And that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask in the Father in my name, he may give you. Isn't that a cool place to be? Amen, that I can ask God whatever. Are we right things, though? And then it says, these things I command you, that you love one another. So if you want to get something, but you hate your brother, guess what? You ain't got nothing coming. You got to love each other, and then when you're walking in that love and, and doing that love, guess what? The Bible says you can't ask then, right? And then you say, oh, I love everybody. You just don't understand me. No, no, amen. You need to love people. Not We don't need to understand you. Hello, somebody. You need to love folks, regardless of if they're good or bad. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter if they're perfect. I only love the perfect people. There is nobody that's perfect, is there? Nobody's perfect. Hello? If you know somebody, amen, go fill up the bathtub and walk on water. Hello, somebody. I don't know nobody that's perfect. Amen? We got to love people that, that are imperfect. Hello, somebody. Man, you know what I mean? I, I, I've been, you know, that 21-day fast we just went on, I was thinking, you know what? God, maybe my stomach will do- go down. It never did. Hello? Amen. God has been belly, belly good to me. The Lord is with me. Amen. So, you know, I, I thought that uh, I, I was going to, you know, I mean, get skinnier when nothing happened, man, because they said you can eat. Hello, somebody. So I was eating. I didn't eat no meat and no, no certain things, but I ate. Hello, somebody. Right? Hello. You see, the main, main ingredient for mega is love. If we're going to go mega, we can't get there without God's love. And that good love has got to be shared. You got to share that love. You know, I'm not talking about uh, the love of the world, L-O-V-E, love under selfish terms. That's lust. Amen. I'm not talking about that love. I'm talking about brotherly love. I'm talking about how to love your wife. I'm talking about how to love your young kids. Amen. It doesn't matter. We got to love everybody. Well, I love you because you're an A student. No, if they're an F student, you still got to love them. Hello, somebody. It's a commandment. It says it right there in the Bible three times. What a commandment is, is a divine rule from God. In other words, it's a law. If you don't follow this law, it won't happen. It's like the law of gravity. It says, what goes up must come down, all right? So if you don't love, guess what? All the other blessings are not going to follow it. So you got to love each other. So think about it. What, who do I got to love? Amen. I got to go home and learn, you know, think about who, who I hate. And, and you know what I mean? I got to stop hating and start loving them, and, you know, I'm in a different way. You got to change the way you think. Recently, I, I, I sold my car, and I bought another car, and I bought a black car, and I've been kicking myself ever since I bought it. I've been a man saying, what the heck did I do? You dummy. You know what I mean? But because it, 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 as soon as you wash it, five minutes later, it's dirty. You know what I mean? 
So I was thinking, you know, I mean, I, man, you done messed up, man. But then I, I changed my mind. I, I go, you know what? It's going to get me out there to exercise. See, I need to wipe it down, get some stuff, and it'll give me something to do. I'm sitting at home not doing nothing most of the day. I might as well get out there and maybe be part of the scenery. They'd be saying, there goes that guy washing the car. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> right? You know what I mean? There got a guy running off the fingerprints. Hello, somebody. I'm going to be that man. You know what I mean? And it's going to help me to get out and get some exercise. There's four categories in the Greek when it comes to love. The first category is that agape love. Agape means a godly love or an unconditional love. That's the love that God has for me and you. There's no conditions on it. God loves you. It doesn't matter what you do. He still loves you. Amen? That is agape love. The second love is eros love or the love between a man and a woman. Thirdly is stargos love. That's the love of a thing. Like pets. I was, you know, telling somebody, I'm not into pets. And my wife is. Hello, somebody. Somebody gave me a dog recently. I gave it to my wife. Because, I, you know, I don't want no hair on me and I don't clean up after dogs. God did not call me to take care of dogs. But some people love dogs. Are you with me? They love cats. They love any kind of horses. They're just like, you know, they love everything when it comes to do with animals. You know what I mean? To love things. So that's what Stargo's love means. The love of a thing. I love to eat. Hello, somebody. I love cars. I love clothes. I love colognes. You know, I love certain things. So I have Stargo's love, you know, for certain things. But then there's the last love I'm going to talk about. is phileo love, which is brotherly love. Loving your brother. Where we get the... The term Philadelphia from the city of brotherly love. The Bible says in the Bible it talks about two men that had a, that had a, 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 a deep brotherly love. Not a sexual love, but a brotherly love. A re, love of respect, a love of honor. And that was Jonathan and David. They had, the Bible says, a love that surpassed the love of a, of a woman. So they had that. They operated in that realm. It's still possible in the world today to love your brother, amen, to be able to trust your brother, that he will be there for you in the good times and the bad times. You'll be able to share your strengths and your weaknesses with him, and he's not going to throw you out the window. Hello, somebody. We need to raise up people in the church that love each other and love God. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap. Also, love has a direction. Love, first of all, is from God. It comes down. The Bible says in Romans 5, 8, that while we are still sinners, Christ died for us. It says in 1 John 4, 19, that we love him because he first loved us. God loved me. I, it wasn't me that loved him. He loved me. He loved me when he see me out there, amen, with a needle in my arm at 15 years old. God loved me. So because God loved me, I can love him back. Look, God, God, now love goes up. It came down. Now it's time for me to receive it. The Bible says that those that receive it, he gave them the right to become children of God. Amen. A child, you are a child of God if you receive his love. Hallelujah. Amen. So love goes up. The Bible says to love God with all your heart, mind, and all your strength. Amen. That's a, a commandment. Then where does love go after it goes up? Well, it goes in. The Bible says to love your neighbor as yourself. If you don't love yourself, how are you going to love your neighbor? Why is it that sometimes we don't love ourselves? Guilt of all of some of the things that we did? Amen. Everybody in here done, done something bad. You can't erase it. It's already gone. But God made a way out, and it's called forgiveness. God loves you no matter what you did. You weren't there for your children. God loves you. Amen. It doesn't matter. Now, God wants you to do good. You didn't do a lot of things right. God loves you. Hello, somebody. I have a daughter. My 35-year-old daughter has been to prison. 
I, I, I went into the home when, when she got born. I went into the home because I was a drug addict. My dad raised my child. But now she got saved. She's in a women's home up north. And her brother, who has my name, he's not my biological son, but the mother named him after me. He's a youth pastor in the church, and she lives with him. Good things can happen. So not only does love go in, but love goes out. I got to love my neighbor. Hello, somebody. It doesn't matter what age they are. It doesn't matter what they look like. It doesn't matter what color they are, how much money they got, what's their education. It doesn't matter. We got to love them no matter what. Say no matter what. Because it's a command from God, a divine rule. Hallelujah. We got to love them. Hello, somebody. We got to forgive them, whatever they did. You know, when I was pastoring several years ago, I had a big service at the church. We hit the streets. We had a big, big service. Well, the men, some guys that left the men's home, amen, when I came home, they had robbed my house, stole every $20,000 worth of stuff. My kids were small. They took all their computers, their TVs, everything. Yeah, I was hot. I, you know what I mean? But I held it in. Hello, somebody. My wife went and got the men's home and got the van and went looking for him. She got crazy, boy. She, all the Indian came out of her. You know, she's half Apache. Amen. So she was out on the war path. So it took me like months to get through that because I, I, had, I couldn't have forgive for a minute. You know, I was like, man, let me catch them dudes. Man. But, you know, after a while, you know, I mean, it went away. And I, one time I talked to somebody and he said two words for you, one word, insurance. And then I said, all right, I should have gotten insurance, man. I'm, I messed that up. But we got to love people. The Bible says you got to love your enemies. You know what I mean? So it goes out. It goes way out there. Do we have any enemies today? Right. We have, we have enemies. When you go out there, you know what I mean? People are going to, oh, you know Jesus? Oh, I love you. No, they're going to say, get away from me. I don't want nothing to do with God. But you still got to love them. Hello? Because you got to look fast at it. You can't get hurt. Amen? You can't get hurt and fall apart. So love goes down, we, we're to receive his love, and then go back up, and then it goes in. You got to forgive yourself. Whatever you did, you blew it. Amen. We all blew it. Hello, somebody. Amen. Everybody blew it. Say everybody. Amen. And then it goes out. I got to love my brothers. Amen. It also tells us what not to love. It tells us what to love God, to love people, but it says not, what not to love. What, is this, what, what do we not love? Well, 1 John 2, 15 through 17 says, do not love the world or the things that are in the world. You mean I can't go party on Friday night at the club? No, you can't, don't. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. If you still love the world, there's something wrong. Hello, somebody, because it's telling us right here. Amen. If you love God and you love the things of God and you come to church and you beloved souls, amen, you won't love the world anymore. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away. In other words, it's temporary. You might in this life get 80, 90 years at the most, but the average life for a man and woman is about 76. So that's it. You know what I mean? That's all you got. Then eternity. So what's more important, temporary or permanent? The permanent life is more important. What you do with your temporary, how you live in your temporary determines where you will go in your permanent how many want to go with God? All of us, right? I'm going to see you. I'm going to go over Gabe's house and hang out with Frank. Frank is going to have all the tennis shoes lined up. Look, you know what I mean? I, yeah, yeah, we think of uh, heaven sometimes. We think it's going to be a weird place. Robots and angels and all that stuff. No, man. There's, it's going to be a beautiful place. Amen. It's going to be a loving place. 
No more tears. Amen. We're going to have gold streets. Streets of gold. Ain't going to be all tore up. Asphalt. Hello, somebody. So the world is passing away and the lust of it. But he who does or who does the will of God abides forever. Abides forever. He who does the will of God. That's all God is asking you this morning. Do the will of God. You know what I mean? Not my will, but Jesus said, thy will be done. You know, the Bible says that he, he, went, to, he went to a prayer before he was going to the cross. And he, he said, he goes, take this cup from me, but nevertheless, not my will, thy will be done. The Bible says that he, he was even sweating, drip, that he, he was so much agony that he dropped Drops of blood drop from his head. You know what I mean? For me and you. Hello, somebody. God loves you and loves us all that he gave his life for me and you. Today, I want to talk to you for a minute about four things we need to focus on to increase the growth of the Victory Outreach Church right here in West Covina. The first thing is that we need to focus on, we've been focusing on all month, is mega. Say M, E, G, A. Mega means extremely large. How many want to have a large church? Surpassing, big, huge. Remember I told you, why do we want that? Because with more, you can do more. How many know, you know, if you go into, into a battle or you're, you're battling a war and you wish you had more weapons so yeah, you can win? Hello, somebody. What are you going to do with just a little pistol in your belt? You know what I mean? God wants us to give us machine guns spiritually. God wants to give us bazookas, tanks, airplanes. He wants to give us all that stuff. So we got to think mega. Say Mega. You heard of megahertz. It's a radio transmission frequency. Well, a megahertz is one million hertz. A megaton in an in in atom bomb is one million tons of TNT. You heard of megabucks. They have that. You probably might even play it when you go home today. It's the lottery. Hello, somebody. You know that the lottery makes more off of poor people than rich people? Because everybody has a dream. If I get this money, I'll do this. If I get that, I'll do that. You be thinking about it. Stop lying. <laughs> then there's a mega structure, the Pentagon, the world's largest office building, 6.5 million square feet. That's a whole lot of office place. Hello, somebody. How many janitors they got up in that camp? Hello, somebody. Then there's a mega hit. Many years ago, uh, around the year 2000, there was a movie that came out about a boat that drowned in the, in the Atlantic. It was called Titanic. Everybody was like, oh, I'm going to go see the Titanic. Everybody went. There was lines out the door. Well, that movie made $650 million, one of the highest grossing movies, about a boat that sank in the ocean. Hello, somebody. They made a love story out of it. Amen. How many of them love stories? I don't. Amen. I'm not. I'm an action guy, Action Jackson. Then there's a mega uh, uh, trend <laughs> I was capping on, on earlier. <laughs> but, but and you know, them Yeezy shoes, right? A lot of people like them shoes, but that's a trend. You know what I mean? When I, when I see them, it reminds me of walking on the moon. Hello, somebody. One small step for man, one giant step for mankind. Amen. So, you know. And, you know, they made a ton of money off those puppies, too, man. Or those Crocs. How many wear Crocs? I like, what the heck are those shoes? I remember, I was, what are those shoes? Man? They got holes in them. Are they there? Oh, they're comfortable. They're there to air out if your feet don't really uh, have the right aroma. Hello, somebody. So, I, I don't know what it is, but they got holes in them. I don't know what it, for. I don't know if you feed your feet something or something, but they they're Crocs. They're, it's a trend. Hello, somebody. And then there's a mega church. What a mega church is 500 or more people. How many of you think we can do that? 
We can do that. It's not, that's not hard to do. If we all multiply ourselves a couple of times, we'll be there. We'll be there in a minute within the next two years. Hello, somebody. But they need to work together to get there. Hello, somebody. And we need to flow with God. Amen. We can't say there's only 66 books in the Bible, not 67. There's not the book of self. We got to do it God's way. Are you with me? The second thing we need to focus on to increase the growth of the church here in Victory Hours, West Covina, is that we need to build a base like they were talking about in the United We Can video, like Sherry was talking about, to put a base here. There's, there's, there is the, the, the footprints of a base here. I don't know if you see it, but I see it. The aroma of a base is here. Hello, somebody. The, the, the DNA of a base is here. Hello, somebody. The, the, the beginnings of a base church is here, right here in Victory Outreach, West Covina. I don't know if you can see it, but I can see it. I can see it. What is happening here is not happening all over the place. Most churches are in survival mode. This church is not in survival mode. It is in growing mode. Hello, somebody. What a base is is a giving place. It's not a taking place. Oh, I take on. Uh, let me have your kids. Yeah, like that movie. Uh, have you ever seen that that movie, uh, uh, um, uh, Blues Brothers? And he was in that restaurant, and he turned to the lady and said, how much for the wife and kids? Remember? You know, it's nice. Not, we're not trying to take your, your best years. We're trying to give you out. So we don't, like the pastor says, we don't have to. We get to. Hello, somebody. Are you with me? We get to give out. This is a giving place. And what it does, it gives. So what does it give? Well, number one, it gives training in specific areas. Like the technical, then people up there in that room, amen, one day you're going to be training people around the world. Hello, somebody. Amen. It gives out training like in the, in the children's ministry. You know, you or that are back there spending time with the kids, you're going to teach other churches how to open up their ministries. Hello, somebody. It gives training like in, in rehab. Hello, somebody. How do you start a men's home? What happens when you do this? How do you start a women's home? You guys are going to go to train. They're going to send a team. Hello, somebody. In evangelism, you're going to teach them how to do the streets, how to set up the sound, how to pass out flyers, how to tell their testimony, where I was, how, where I'm at now, and how, you know where I'm going. Hello, somebody. How God saved me. Amen. The three-minute testimony. Somebody needs to run up here right now and tell their testimony for God's honor and God's glory. Is there anybody that's bold enough to do it? a three-minute testimony? Amen. Then come on up here real quick. Amen. Come on up. Amen. We got Bastard in the house. How you doing, church? My name is Vincent. I'm 32 years old, and I used to be lost and bound. I used to be strung out on heroin. I used to game bang. I used to hear voices talking to me. I used to answer them back. I used to be smoked out, you know. But one day, God, God you know, came into my heart, turned my life around. And, um, you know, I stand here today, a graduate of the Victory Home, West Covina Home. And... Uh, I thank God, you know, because honestly, there's no place I'd rather be but here in Victory Highway, West Covina. God bless. Amen. And guess what, bro? When they call for somebody, they're going to send you over there to train them to open up a home. Hello, somebody. Watch out, world. Amen. We're coming. Amen. When it comes to evangelism and church growth, how did you do it? This is how we did it. This is what needs to be done. It's going to create specialists. We're going to have specialists. When I was in the Army, they called me a spec four for specialist four. I didn't do nothing but get drunk and, and, and go to sleep, but they call me a specialist. We're not talking about those kind of specialists. We're talking about a real specialist that knows how to do something for God in a specific area. Hello, somebody. And we're going to send out trainers. Tell somebody you're going to train people. Train. I'm not talking about giving people some training diapers or putting on some training wheels. I'm talking about raising up giants king, for the king's kids. Amen. 
You know who, uh, uh, Billy Graham was one of the greatest evangelists of our time. And he led thousands of people to the Lord, millions of people to the Lord. But the one that's greater than him is the person that led him to the Lord. Amen. And some of you are going to lead people to the Lord. You know, one time in 1994, I was in San Antonio, Texas, doing a rally. We went in there to do a rally. Excuse me. But uh, we, were run, we were, went in as a Nikki Cruz outreach. And we went there to do a rally outside in San Antonio. And all of a sudden, it started raining. I mean, like a monsoon rain or the big old raindrops. Hello, somebody. Amen. They just started coming down. So we grabbed the equipment before it gets wet. Grab, we're grabbing the chairs and everything, running back. And I looked to my scene. I, I get side and I see a guy named Bert that was on the crusade with us. And he had about 20 little kids in a circle in the rain. And he had them in a circle holding hands. And he was leading them to the Lord. <laughs> them kids must be in their 40s or 50s right now. You know, and but you know, that was one of the greatest things I I seen. One of the greatest things I seen was was that powerful. God wants to raise up trainers in specific areas. Hello, are you with me? Oop. I'm sorry. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm sorry. How's everybody doing? Good? It's a little warm in here. I'm a face train. Okay. I'm sorry. Amen. The second thing that a base church gives out is supplies. What are the supplies that we're going to give out? Well, healing is one of them. God's going to bring people here from different parts of the world to get healed. Amen. They're going to say, not just to get trained, but they're going to get healed. Not, I'm not just talking about physical healing. I'm talking about emotional healing, spiritual healing. Different areas of healing are going to happen right here. You're going to, people are going to walk by you, and you're going to lay your hands on them or tell them a word. Amen. And you're going to heal them because God is in this place. Not only healing is going to, we're supplying healing, but we're supplying, we're supplying restoration. What does restoration mean? It means to be back to the place where you're originally supposed to be at. Hello, somebody. Some of us, the devil got our heads spinning, man. And we don't wasted a lot of time doing different things. But God is here to restore you. God is going to restore you back to the place. You might have been messed up for a few years. But guess what? We're going to, as a matter of fact, God is going to speed up the restoration on your life. Forgiveness is here. Forgiveness for a lot of people, like I talked about earlier, God is going to forgive us, and God is going to forward us, and God is going to forget about all the sins that we ever done. Some of you think God remembers everything. The Bible says that God throws your sin in the sea of forgetfulness. God then forgot about it. You need to forget about it. Hello, somebody. Amen. Then he forwards us. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Amen. Think base. Hello, somebody. And the last thing that God is going to give us to build a base church is he's going to give us eyesight. Hello, somebody. Anybody want some glasses? Amen. Eyesight. What is eyesight? It's the ability to see. It takes you to the top floor. It expands your vision. It shows you what could be. Now that I've seen this, I can do that. Hello, somebody. If they're doing it there, I can do it here. If they're doing it on somewhere else around the world, we can do it here. Right. And the third thing we need to focus on to, to grow a West Covina church is we need to focus on time. Amen. And that's why they're getting ready to kick me out of here. Hello, somebody. <laughs> we need to understand what's going on to know what time it is. Tell somebody, what time is it? Ephesians 5.16 says to redeem the time because the days are evil. Pastor John, you got to go now because we're redeeming the time. Hello. Redeem means to regain the time. Regain the wrong by doing right. P 
pay back the bad we did by doing good. We are living in the last days. Paul wrote, perilous times will come. Dangerous times. It's dangerous out there. That fentanyl they're taking, that's dangerous. It's killing people. We are living in the last days. We're last days ministry. And I believe there will be an end time push. An end time revival. And guess what? We will be part of it. So we need to make a maximum effort and be there right in the mix. Hello, somebody. Get it together. What we need to focus on to increase, the the last thing we need to focus on, we need to focus on team. What is a team? Well, you're sitting with them right now. That person right next to you. We're on the same team. Say, no, I'm not. I don't, you know what I mean? They got to pay me. No, we ain't paying you nothing. God going to bless you, though. You know what I mean? That's, that's, you know, that's unfortunate. They pay all these pro baseball, basketball, football players millions of dollars to play. But the guys that go to a war for me and you don't get hardly anything. You know what I mean? But let me tell you, God loves you. The Bible says, again, I say to you that if two or three agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Amen. How many wants God to bless them? For where two or three are gathered in my name, I'm there in the midst. So that means God's here. God is here. You see, alone we're limited, but as a team, we're unlimited. Amen. We're going to win championships every year. You know, the Raiders have a saying. It's called, wait till next year. (laughs) Nehemiah teamed up with men who had weapons in one hand and tools in the other. David had 600 men. You know, they were apodectrious. They could show, throw, throw rocks with both hands. They could shoot bow and arrows with both hands. They were apodextrous. God wants to raise up people like that here. Amen. Ruth teamed up with Naomi. Joshua teamed up with Caleb. Elijah teamed up with his disciple and said there's more with us than, more than there is against us. David teamed up with an Egyptian slave who showed them where the Amalekites were that had ripped them off. Naaman teamed up with a young girl that told him about a prophet in Israel that can heal him. Amen. Samson teamed up with a small lad that led him between the two pillars so that he was able to knock down the building. 120 went up to the upper room. 3,000 got saved. The team concept is laced throughout the Bible. We need team culture here. It needs to be a part of who we are. What is culture? It's the way of thinking, behaving, and working that exists within a place. The Greeks had a culture of gods and mythology. The Romans had a culture of dominance and slavery. The Americans had a, a culture of freedom, but our culture is run down and broken down. Now it's an anything goes culture. The devil, Mr. B, Lucifer, Big Red, Old Slewfoot, is trying to take advantage of that, the kokui, and bring in a culture of chaos and hate where life is meaningless, where there's a culture of hopelessness and despair, of murder and suicide. A couple years ago, they asked me to do a, a funeral in East L.A. And I, for an older man that had passed away, and I went there. And I was kind of late, so I kind of rushed in. I went in the wrong room. And when I went in that room, there was a young girl, about 15 years old, laying in the casket. So I asked the man, what happened? And he goes, she committed suicide. And then he, then he said, uh, uh, it, somebody was, it was over, her boyfriend broke up with her on Facebook or something. And he goes, you know, and then I go, is that, is that right? And then on the way out, he goes, We get one of those every month. It happens all the time. We ain't got time to wait. We got to do it now. We got to do it now. 
Amen. The devil is trying to set up a culture of murder and suicide. But in the midst of all that, Victory Outreach West Covina is bringing in a culture of teamwork, of movement, of motivation, inspiration, vision, identity. I know who I am. Salvation, destiny, an energized culture, a culture of excitement where the weak say I'm strong and the poor say I'm rich, where the lost are found and the blind can see, where the confused get direction, where the young can run, where the older are not forgotten, where the rejected are accepted. It's an unlimited culture. Finally, in closing, as they go ahead, I made an acronym out of the word team. Not together, everyone achieves more. That's the one everybody knows. But I made one myself, and the T stands for tip of the spear. God has called us to stand at point. Hello, somebody. To pierce the darkness. The E stands for expectancy. Expectancy is our currency. Silver and gold have I none, but what I have, rise up and walk in the name of Jesus. Expect miracles. Expect God to move in your life. The A is for atmosphere. We have an atmosphere of respect for God and for people. And the M is for more. God sees more in you. It's like that guy that was walking through the field and he found a pearl. Well, he sold everything he got and bought that field because there was more there. There's more here. Hello, somebody. More is here. Like Sister Julie, when she stirred up them pancakes, more is here. We serve a God of more. Our leader, our founder is a more. He's taken the world. He started right here. He's from the projects of, of, of New York City. Half Puerto Rican Italian man that came out here to go to school, and now he's 83 years old, still taking cities. And our pastor, Pastor Ezra, sat under him for years. So what's in him, our founder is in Pastor Ezra. They have the same DNA. Come on, somebody, give the Lord a hand clap. I want you to stand with me, amen. Stand with me. Hallelujah, as we sing that song, let's go ahead. but I want to pray for people that want more. You know, I see Vince right here. There's more in you, Vince. There's more. Come on up here, son. Brother, come here. Come here. I'll call you young. Come on up here. There's more in you. Dylene, there's more in you. My brother right here. This is a good brother right here from the Spanish ministry. Good to have you, bro. Amen. You and your wife. Brother Mo. This altar is open for for those that see more, that see more, that, that want more. Hallelujah. It doesn't mean we want more of your time, it's that you want more of God. 
Hey, thanks for tuning in. I hope this message blessed you and ministered into your heart. I also want to let you know that it's never too late for you to give. If you look at the links below, there you can see different ways for you to give unto the Lord. Also, if you have not subscribed to our channel, go ahead and do so right now, where there you can see previous messages and future services. Other than that, get connected and stay connected. We'll see you real soon. God bless.